Hi guys, welcome back to the Demon Tweaks channel. In this episode, we're gonna be looking at the rig, the monitor, and the PC needed to get you going in the sim racing world. First of all, Gaz, the rig. What does it do? What's important about the rig itself? So Joe, the rig itself needs to be strong, needs to be sturdy, and it needs to support these high performance direct drive wheelbases, pedals, and any shifters or handbrakes you need. So it needs to be the best. Okay, so I guess that torsion stiffness is almost the most crucial part of a good rig, allowing all that feedback to come to the driver. Yeah, so it comes to the driver and it doesn't vibrate through all the pillars and all the bars. You know, it's going to you. The force of the car, the force of the actual wheelbase is going to you and you get your input into that. Mega. And which rig do we have here with us? Well, we have the Track Racer T160. This is a top of the range rig. This is the sturdiest rig we do and it will cope with any direct drive wheel system. I mean, I believe every word you say, so I'm sold. But what other options do Demon Tweaks offer on the rig front? Well, we do lighter versions of this rig. We do a TR80. And we also do tubular frame rigs from Sparco and from Track Racer. So the list is endless when it comes to rigs. Just go on our website and have a look and just see what suits your needs. Wicked. Why did we choose this one for our sim? Well, this is the biggest and best rig we do with the biggest amount of adjustability you can have from the pedals to the seat to the wheel deck. So we can tailor for anyone in this rig. Okay, and talking about that, I actually noticed that the monitors aren't directly mounted to the rig itself. How exactly does that work? Well, we decided on this build to go for a freestanding monitor mount so you can move it around a bit more around the rig, um, as we'll need to move it at some stage. But you can also go for an integrated one, so it's bolted straight onto the actual chassis itself. Um, that can cater for single monitor or even triple monitor, depending, or even a quad monitor, actually, if you look at the top there. It's awesome. It's really impressive. I have to kind of ask, what's important about a monitor? Why can't... I'll just use my TV that I've got in the lounge. If you use your TV, then the refresh rate will be far too slow. So by the time you've seen a breaking point, you'll be at the next corner. These refresh rate on these monitors are 180 hertz. So that'll give you a clear picture and you'll be able to see your breaking point, turning point, crystal clear. Amazing, so it's like three times more picture per second than my TV. So even for me, that's easy to start to comprehend how the performance will start to really help. And at home on my sim, I do just have a single display when i've driven this the sort of triple immersive feeling is great what would you kind of summarize the difference between having one big one and three slightly smaller ones you've kind of hit the nail on the head there immersion is your main thing you will get a bit of immersion with a single screen 49 inches but with the triples are more around the side of you so it's much more immersive you'll probably see similar feel to your mirror to your side screens or your wing mirrors in your real car so it's a bit more realistic okay and i've seen obviously with the thin bezels it almost doesn't look like three screens either so it's a really good positive one and then the real luxury for me is that fourth screen at the top that you could use I guess predominantly for data or even sort of your home desktop area yeah I'll show you how much faster I am than you okay probably don't need the fourth screen just yet then but a nice luxury if you want it hello future guys here I just wanted to run through the PC and monitors in a little bit more detail what I do is I'll gallivant in around also but before we do that I want you to show you our new custom seat that's just arrived from Sparco Let's spin the seats. I nearly fall off. Doesn't it look awesome? We've got all our partner logos on the back here, as you can see. This is going to look great on our sim rig. It's a custom Sparco Evo QRT. Sim racing seat. Spark offer pretty much every FA seat they do for sim racing version. So if you're a driver, you can match your real life seat on your sim. A selection of these seats can be wrapped in your own custom design. You can check out the full range of race and reclining seats over on our website. But now, Let's hop back on the rig. So let's start off with the monitors. There are a few different monitor setups you can go for. You can mount them directly to the cockpit or have them freestanding like ours. For a single monitor setup, popular sizes are 27 inch, 32 inch and 49 inches. But most sim racers prefer to use a triple monitor setup, giving them the most immersive experience. The three LG monitors we have here are 32 inches, they have a refresh rate of 180 hertz, less than one millisecond response time, contrast ratio of 1000 to one, and also have slim bezels providing a fantastic wraparound image. Our fourth monitor is slightly smaller. It's 27 inches in size, which we use mostly for data and to see when I'm faster than Joe, which is all the time. Moving on to the PC. iRacing is probably the most demanding sim on the market today. If you have a PC that can run iRacing, then it should run most of the titles, such as Assetto Corsa, R-Factor, and so on. We've got a selection of pre-built PCs on our website, but for our rig, we're using the Overclockers Pro Gaming PC. It has one terabyte of storage, six core processor, 32 gigabytes of RAM, 
and most importantly for me, it has an Asus GeForce RTX 3060 Ti graphics card. All these components give us a smooth and uninterrupted experience with sharp graphics too. For me, a good quality headset is a must in sim racing. This Steel Series 7 headset is a great option for sim racing. It has low latency and will provide a clear, crisp sound. Not only can you hear your engine clearly, but your teammates too. They'll be providing you with vital information while you'll do all the important stuff on track. An added bonus here is that the wireless. So you don't have to worry about any wires getting in the way. Now, let's get back to Pascaz and Joe in the studio. And I think the next part really is the software, not the geeky stuff that you know about, but the actual games itself. We've got iRacing here, a game that I've played on a lot, if I can say the word game. No. Um, but there's so many others out there as well, isn't there? Yeah, there's a lot of different games. No, actually simulators, Joe. Games are like Gran Turismo and Assetto Corsa. You know, sim proper simulating games give you the real feel to give as close feel as you can to a GT3 car. So my choice is iRacing, something I enjoy and hopefully something everyone else can enjoy. Yeah, and I mean, Assetto Corsa Competition is something that has really had a huge link with my GT3 world in terms of there are actually championship points given in the virtual world to link up with the real world. So it's starting to get a real synergy. And even I find some of the arcadey games slash simulators <laughs> enjoyable, be it Dirt 5, especially with one of those handbrakes, there's so much fun to be had. And I think it opens up maybe to a slightly younger audience to learn a little bit more about the whole sim racing world. And just remember, all of those products are available on the Demon Tweaks website. The links are in the description below. And if you enjoyed this video, click on the subscribe button and we'll see you in the next one.